What's going on, Bizanos V here. Today I have another marker watch. Before I begin, I just want to say, guys, I'm doing giveaways nonstop in just about every one of my videos for a gorgeous deck box. You can win one of these beautiful deck boxes. His mine's actually right over here. You can win one of these beautiful deck boxes. I'll make sure I can show it in screen. These things pop out. They're magnetic. Absolutely cool. Uh, you can win just by commenting down below. Now, you have to be from the United States to win it. Uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to hit start, pick a winner. But if you want to go ahead and buy the deck boxes, all you got to do is go over to smartteachy.com. Smartteachy.com, use promo code Paisano. I think it's 10. Links in below in the description. Check it out and get yourself a deck box. You can actually get the set for roughly around 55 bucks. Currently on sale right now. Absolutely gorgeous deck boxes. Make sure to get one. You got your main deck, you got utility deck box, and you got a combo deal right here once again on smartteachy.com. All right. Let's go right into cyberstorm access because to be honest with you this set is looking a little overpriced to me let me know if i'm wrong let me know maybe i'm blowing out of proportions uh starlight rails look kind of fine for me value wise i do think we will see gwem go down a little bit little walita go to go down a lot more visa star frost has the waifu tax but to do it's kind of weird gonna go down uh firewall singularity gonna go down uh, gold pride worth nothing uh, then you got cards like chaos angel now this is supposed to be the most expensive cigarette at this set it's only $55 is it worth it uh, I really don't know I mean I think Chaos angel is a cool car I think it's really good but is it worth $55 $55 puts you in the same kind of bracket as the Buell cards like access code talker so I don't know if it's access code talker good I don't need a meta cost for it to be like this kind of value it's definitely not a bad car, and I do think this card can see play in the future. But right now, it's I don't think it's worth $55. Gwem is $29. Um, I think it's a good price for it. I think Gwem at $29 makes a lot of sense to me. Brandon is one of the top decks in the meta. Post Bayless, I would argue it's arguably one of the best decks in the game. In my opinion, and this is my opinion, and it's definitely uh, uh, biased because I love the crap out of Brandon, but a really good Brandon player can win anything this meta. A really good any other deck player still has to play the game against a lot of other players that makes any sense to you and i do think brandon is uh, the you know the deck to beat in this in this meta although if you prepare for it you lose to a lot of other things so you can't really hyper focus on brandon when you have all these other decks in the meta uh, other cards like secret red Despy and ludo walita once again this is some card that this is a card that some brandon players are looking to take out of the extra deck some are keeping in is it 20 dollars eh, i mean it's a secret rare so i guess it has to be but it doesn't make much sense uh, Peaceful Planet Calarium. Um, I don't know what this card belongs in. I don't really have this idea. Uh, Gold Pride Bullock next time is literally what you pull and you say, God damn it, because you pulled a bad card in your box of Cyberstorm Access. You know, it's really hard buying sealed booster box of Yu Gi Oh! when you spend about 65 well, on TCG Player, realistically, 85 in the OTS store, and pull a $55 Cyber Angel. And that's considered a good pull. Other cards like Gold Pride Bellock next time and probably Gold Pride Roller Baller are more than more likely your pulls. And then you look at your Ultra Rares because that's all you have left. And the next expensive Ultra Rare is Bistio Dispater and it's $11. It just doesn't make any sense to buy still product unless you're opening it for the fun. And that's fine, but that's all there is. The fun. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget Ringworm, the Garden, the Dragon Guarding 100 Apples. 15 bucks. Not bad, actually. Nevertheless, once again, I think that uh, uh, Cyberstorm Access has good value. It's just not realistically in opening sealed booster boxes. Anyone bought a case? There are times in this game where people go, V, I'm buying a case of the sex. I like it. And it's like, all right. But then you get like shit like this. And you're like, why did you buy your case? Like, did you really need three Gwem? Three Chaos Angels? Did you need your big fan of Gold Pride? Three Albion? Like, it doesn't make any sense. So hopefully you guys didn't buy a lot of sealed booster boxes, is what I'm trying to say. All right. Looking over at Wild Survivors. This set is just, ugh. I know Don's supposed to get more support. And to me, Dino players are slowly devolving into, um, like, a Cyber Dragon player, hero players, where they just have their little, their little click. I wouldn't say cult, but really click. Uh, but Dino players, they're still kind of good. You still got to worry about them. I think they are still better than those other decks I just mentioned. But they're not far from being in with the pack. Now, with that said, Fossil Deck CR really needed? Not really. So, you know, Raptor CR? Okay, that looks amazing. Ultimate Conductor CR? Okay, it's, it's deserved. It should be ulti, but whatever. It deserves its due as a, as a CR. That's fine. Emidor Arkansas CR? All right, Konami, you're just juicing that. This, this set is called Wild Survivors. We're juicing the fuck out of Dino players. That's the name of this set, because that's all it's doing. 
And and as far as like floodgate CRs, I'm never a big fan of floodgate CRs because to be honest with you, they're always overpriced and nobody's gonna pay that much money for a floodgate. Nobody's gonna pay that much money to say you can't do this. Anyone playing a, pl a place on a floodgate CRs, so that's fine, I guess, but they're gonna rotate in and out of the game. So you do get value if they still exist around the game, Konami doesn't hit them on the ban list, which Konami definitely historically has done in the past. The number one as a CR being $110 is definitely overpriced, uh, but it does look cool. It's a good card. It sees play and then it sees play for a while, then it comes back and sees play. It's probably the best card out of Wild Survivors, but it's not the best card to pick in my opinion. Um, one thing about Wild Survivors that everyone's really excited about is obviously going to be uh, Vanquish Souls. Are they going to be good? Now, to be honest with you, in the OCG, Vanquish Souls came up, came in, and then slowly stepped back. Will that happen? Well, we don't know, to be honest with you. The OCG and Tissue meta is vastly different, and Vanquish Souls can actually be really good here. And I hope they are, to be honest with you, because another deck in the meta is kind of cool, to be honest, especially post balanced. With that said, does cards like Draw and Lockwood hurt Vanquish Souls? You have to ask yourself that question. Speaking of CRs, Solemn Judgment CR is another reason why I don't really go crazy on CRs as much as I used to. And the reason why is because values of cards like this don't mean anything. In fact, historically speaking, it went from $99 down to where it's currently roughly around $52. Why? Why would you why would it go down so much? Well, because it's a fucking Ultima Rare, and Ultima Rare is way- The Ultima Rare went from 97 to, okay, uh, well, 95. Nevertheless, the Ultima Rare is worth a good amount of money. And the reason why is because it's a better rarity. It's better for value. It just is overall. I'm not trying to crap on CRs, by the way. I really- I'm just trying to give you an indication of the valuation of what CRs are. They are on their ulties above Seeker Rares. That's exactly where they are. Konami needed to, needed to fill a slot in, and they did it, and they called it CRs. Now, CRs technically are collector's rarities, a rarity meant for collectors, and you'd be lying to yourself if you think it's only meant for collectors. It's meant for competitive Yu-Gi-Oh players. They're not sitting there going, oh man, these collectors just love dinos. Well, maybe the GX ones, but they love they're going to be one. No, no, they don't. Ultimately, I think CRs are good, just not as good as Seeker Rares, Starlight Rares, and then everything else above that. Uh, another card I want to really remind you of that exists is Great Keeper's Inscription. This card came out of Photon Hypernova. It's dirt cheap. No one knows about it. I haven't why I place it yet, I'll be honest with you, but I'm going to be buying it soon. At the start of main phase, you want to apply one of the following effects into the end of your opponent's turn. Really few cards have those kind of effects where it says end of your opponent's turn, and the ones that do are just really good. This card says, neither player can activate card effects in the graveyard, neither player can banish cards from the graveyard, neither player can special, special summon monsters from the graveyard. This is an excellent card, and I do think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players are kind of looking past this card, but to be honest with you, it, you shouldn't, because this card will definitely see play. Currently, roughly around $4 worth of dollar shipping, this is a great card. Once again, it may not be able to be used now, but in the future of this game, an effect like this is broken. And I do think that, well, the multiple effects. And I do think a lot of players overlook this card out of full on Hypernova because it was in the same set as Kashira's. Speaking of which, Kashira's have been going down in value. A little bit more since the ban list. Uh, and I don't think Kashira's are gone. In fact, I don't think they're, they're really gone at all. I do think Kashira's are still a tier 1 deck. But they have to play more carefully now. Can they do it? Absolutely. One thing I want you to notice, though, is Kashira Rice Heart, Starlight Rare, definitely tanked. It was roughly around $300. Uh, for a short time, it was roughly around $200, and now it's currently at $170. Now, let me tell you something really important that you need to listen to. Kashira Rice Heart, Starlight Rare, will go back up in value, no doubt in my mind. Look in the past month, once again, you can see over here from $270, all the way down to where it is at $165. Um, just like other Starlight Rares that go limited, uh, the one that comes to mind is the Telemans, um, what's, what's the... Tillman's uh, big booty bitch, uh, Rukulos. Her. All right. Once again, they're looking at the past three months. Balance hit 150, and now it's slowly starting to rise up. It's currently at 166. Even in the past month, you can see the chart really starting to rise up as well. Uh, and the reason why Rukulos is starting to rise up in value is because, hi, she's a Starlight Rare. She belongs to a deck specific R type. That's what happens to be a really good one. Sounds familiar? Uh, anyone out there playing uh, Kashira's? You're good. If you own your sorry place and you're wondering, V, do I sell it? 160s? If you want to, it's going to slowly go up. It's all up to you at the end of the day. Uh, I still want to remind everybody the fact that Labyrinth is relatively dirt cheap. Uh, Lady Labyrinth is the only expensive car. She's, rough, she's a secret rare, $25. After that, the deck is literally on sale. Uh, I mean, you might see Secret Rare uh, Labyrinth Labyrinth, but you got the old, uh, Super Rare for $0.05. Cents. Like, the deck is dirt cheap. 
and the deck is really good and everybody has to realize what this deck does and find ways to play around it because this deck will beat you the meta needed for labyrinth on labyrinth needed kind of same with trap tricks was so the entire meta to slow down a little bit not even a lot just a little bit and even with the last meta we we're currently in technically this meta everything's moving so fast labyrinth was still beating ass the fact that the meta is slowing down a little bit means that labyrinth is actually going to start catching up and don't be surprised you start seeing labyrinth and maybe even trap trick start topping events again because the meta is just ripe drone lock but ultimate race is a lot, lot of money that's the announcement uh um, it went from 142 to almost near 200 dollars currently 195 just a lot of money that's what ultimate rare is if you have yours uh it's up to you if you want to sell or not uh the reason why i want to say it, it's sell because this card comes in and out of the game and it's 200 dollars, and that's like 600 dollars. and let's be real like joan lockburn 200 dollars is a lot of money but is it worth having it a lot a lot of money it's up to you it's up to you it's good throw it out there crs uh <laughs> hey look cr went up it went from like 55 to hey it went up a good amount 92 it's a big big day for you cr holders uh i wouldn't even buy a cr i'm talking like what we got here we got we got an ultra rare Ooh, do we got super rare let's see what's super rares super is like 17 ah, for that couple of bucks get an ultra rare it went from like eight bucks to like 20 something dollars hey listen get 600 dollars pay 60 keep the rest Seems like a pretty good deal to me. Just throwing it out there. I own an Ultimate Rare Seekers, uh, Draw and Lock Birds. I might be considering selling mines online soon. Give me some Ultra Rares. I want my main, to that, my main deck to be Starlight uh, Rarity. I don't care about having Max Rarity in this game anymore. It doesn't mean, mean anything the way Konami moves products out so fast. Like, anyway, I should probably do another video on that. All right. Psychic and Punisher goes up, goes down. Okay, there it is right there, 33 down to 19, 17. Uh, and then it starts doing this thing where it starts going up again. It's currently $25 for a second end Punisher. I don't know why this card's worth any bit of money. I don't. It hasn't seen play since it's debuted out of Dimension Force. Um, but it is. So um, keep an eye out for that. All right. Nightmare Corrupt the Ibli. Here's the thing, though. And I really want to ask anybody who plays Kashiras out there, do you do this? Are you going to start playing Nightmare Corrupt the Ibli? I mean, this is still really good. A lot of players, in my opinion, are not respecting Nightmare Corrupt the Ibli. And I do think this is going to be another way for Kashira players to win again. What happens with a lot of decks when they get by the balance is the fact that they go back to the first thing they did in the beginning. And for a lot of Kashiras in the beginning, you were just Ibli locking people left and right. And then the minute they summoned something, your right heart banished it. And then your opponent said, we'll go to game two. You know? So is, it, is this going to happen? Now, the price of, the price of Ibli used to be roughly around 36. It's currently down to, well, on limits are roughly around 17. Uh, first gen version of her is, what, $18. She's really cheap right now. But I think if I was playing Kashira, if I was the Kashira fanboy, I would 100% play Ibli. Uh, just because if you can Ibli lock somebody, go a Rice Heart, all on the Nibiru, you're in a good position. And. I don't know. I think that's a really cool play. Let me know what you guys think about the comments down below. But I think a lot of players might have an issue. Some might not. Some might. Let me know what you guys think about that. All right. Santa Claus. Um, this card went up in value and slowly coming back down in value. Do you run Santa Claus? Do you run Kaijus? Do you play Branded? If you run Dragoon, you run Kaiju, so you can do more burn damage. If not, you can run Santa Claus. Uh, it's also good against Ibli, but nobody's really playing Ibli from when I last seen. Uh, to be honest with you, I think Santa Claus is a great card, but I just think Kaijus are better. Uh, Santa, Santa Claus has a lot of applications, but Kaijus, ultimately, they just go, you just go Dragoon, you burn them, and you win in time. So, I don't know, that's my opinion. All right. Then we have the Liquid Duel. Now, this card I've been talking about sporadically in the past. Uh, if you're looking to play any version of Goat Format, you need this card. This is not an option. It's not a maybe. This is a, hey, you definitely need it. Now, there's a bunch of printings, uh, and to be honest with you, there's no cheap printing. It's going to run you at least $23 and above. And that's just front end, um... We'll grab a random card. We'll see it. Let's grab this one over here. Uh, we'll grab this one over here. Uh, we'll go lightly played. I mean, I was talking to you front end on the website, but the 25 over here for this one. I began to look at other ones to be a little bit higher. It has been going down in value, but I'm telling you right now, it, it's looking to stabilize. I do think this card's a card you need if you want to play gold format. In my opinion, I'm more of a fan of Edison format. Maybe I'll do a Mark Watch talking more about Edison format cards because that's what I like to play and I love. Uh, but for anyone playing goats, this is almost your last chance on this card. I might reprint this. Will it reprint it? I mean, it has reprinted a lot in the past, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee a reprint in the future, the way Konami's been doing their reprints lately. Uh, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this competition down below. Let's see who wins. Once again, guys, huge shout out to Smart TCG for sending me a bunch of deck boxes. Uh, there they are right there. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Here's another one. Here's mine. Uh, so, I'm going to pick your name, 
randomly at a raffle. If you're from the United States, you have to be from the United States, okay? Reach out to me if you win on whatever medium, Facebook. Um, actually, you know, just do um, just do um, let's do Instagram, okay? Or like whatever, Twitter, whatever, Facebook. Just reach out to me. I, I check Instagram more than any other medium, so do Instagram. All right, let's go pick a winner. Gunner Duels. I really think they should hit Kashira birth to one. He says, "Ooh." Adding more salt to the Kashira uh, fire. Um, I'm going to answer your question. I don't know if Kashira birth needed to go to one. Birth's the kind of card to me that if you hit birth, you still have the unicorn problem. I don't think birth's a problem when you realize unicorn was the one that was doing everything. Every Kashira player didn't want to open birth. They wanted to open unicorn. So you go with the card they ideally want to open. I don't know. That's my thoughts on that. I probably had more thoughts, but I'm too lazy. Gonna do us. Yo. You want yourself a gorgeous deck box? Hit me up on Instagram or Discord. Discord's another one. Uh, guys, if you want to win a deck box, all you got to do, it's so simple, comment down below. And I'll pick one of your comments, and I'll send you a deck box. It's that easy, that simple. Yes, you have to be from the United States. And uh, that's it. That's simple. Just comment down below. It's your boy V. And you guys all have a great day.